like fictional characters that generally have their origins around the 1800s? Do you like being unable to touch others because you have literal acid coming out of your skin? Do you like gears? Like, really, really like gears? Then do I have the game for you! Code Realize is a game that combines the stories of famous book characters with a steampunk aesthetic to create a fun, heart-pounding journey in London. The heroine will go on many adventures that will bring her closer to her past and to one of five incredibly hot men. The game starts like most Otome games, naming your character. For this run, I decided I needed a powerful name, one that invokes as much nostalgia and joy as my famous counterparts. So I took the name Galaga. Pew, pew. Galaga wakes up in a dilapidated mansion all by her lonesome after a deep, introspective montage of memories proclaiming her a monster. She is also currently in the process of being kidnapped, which she is surprisingly okay with as long as no one touches her. See, Galaga has this fun quirk. Her body has a gemstone that produces an incredibly powerful poison that melts through, well, anything. Clothing, furniture, metal, flesh. She touches it and it dissolves into a chemically burned pile of goo. Fortunately for her, her father, Isaac Beckford, remember that name, it's important for later, had created clothes that prevented her acid from touching others and from keeping her perpetually nude. And boy did he have style, because this is one of the cutest outfits I have ever seen. But back to the kidnapping. It turns out that this is the Royal Guard, some of Queen Victoria's finest men, here to take Galaga from her home in Wales to someone in London who is most likely evil. Galaga is about to be taken away when the group is attacked by none other than our first romantic option, Arsene Lupin. Lupin is nonviolent in nature, preferring to dazzle rather than fight, so he makes a dramatic entrance and then smoke bombs the road to steal Galaga away. The next morning, she eats breakfast together with him while he lays out a deal where they can help each other search for info on Galaga's father because, let's say it together, folks, the main heroine has convenient amnesia. He promises that in exchange, he'll grant Galaga's greatest wish to feel the touch of another human being just once in her life. And I just couldn't help myself. I refused. Galaga walks away into the fields of England and sets out for her own adventure. No help, no friends, and no idea where she's going. The end. Okay, okay, fine. I accept your deal, strange man who kidnapped me from my kidnappers. I guess I'll trust you this once. Next we meet his partner in crime, the loud and obnoxious MP Barbicane. He pulls up in his car, proclaims his undying love for Galaga, and takes us to London to start our search. Getting into London isn't easy though, and no one taught Galaga how to lie, so we end up running for our lives in the city. Galaga gets separated from her companions and inevitably gets lost. Some random dude says he'll help her find her friends, and in true clueless protagonist fashion, she believes him and ends up in an alleyway with a bunch of human traffickers. Fortunately, she gets saved by random love interests passing by, again, but this time he's freaking adorable. Her savior is the utterly fluffy and delightful scientist running from the government as a wanted terrorist, Victor Frankenstein. After saving her life, she of course trusts him implicitly, even after he asks to examine her body. For science! They use a map Lupin had given Galaga to find the location everyone was meeting at and find a large mansion as their new hideout. More introductions are in order, as Lupin and Impy first think that Galaga was kidnapped a third time by Victor, but after some brief explanation and another deal, Victor officially joins the crew. We then meet our next love interest and most gracious host, Saint Germain. With most of our main cast finally together, everyone embarks on a trip to the local mafia-run gambling pier to find some info. Instead, what they find is love interest number five and superhuman weapon handler and fighting expert, Van Helsing. After some close calls, even Van Helsing can't withstand Galaga's charm and joins the team. 
And that's where our story really starts. Lupin is looking for info about a terrorist attack, Impy is searching for a lost ship part, Victor is trying to clear his name and settle something in his past, Van Helsing wants revenge on the leader of the secret organization Twilight, and Saint Germain... Well, Saint Germain doesn't like to share anything about his plans, but you can be sure he's hiding something. And all of these stories are tied to Gallica, Isaac Beckford's daughter. See. Isaac wasn't just some dad to a girl who's actually toxic off Twitter. He's the modern Prometheus, the creator of the Neo Steam engine that caused London to change into the steampunk society, the most celebrated alchemist the world has seen in hundreds of years, and main researcher of the Philosopher's Stone. If you've been paying any attention, you might already know where this story's going. Each character has their own goals and plans, but they form an unlikely friendship as they go through trials and ordeals, and ultimately, we get a funny wholesome adventure romp through London. And honestly, that's why I don't want to go into as much detail as I usually do for Otome game videos. Normally, I'd tell you about my journey through a route in comedic fashion. I'd pick the longest-haired love interest and dive deep into the story of our love. I'd tell you about the time we hijacked a train to take out the leader of the secret organization hunting me down, or the time we pretended to be terrorists and threatened Queen Victoria during a public ceremony to gain our freedom and clear our names. Maybe I'd regale you with the events of our airship race where our greatest weapon was Van Helsing fired out of a cannon. Or maybe I dramatically recall the moment where I finally figured out what I am in a dark underground laboratory of my father. But most of the fun of this title is in experiencing the joy and hilarity of these moments for yourself. And this is too enjoyable for me to take that away from someone wanting to play this title for the first time. The characters are wonderful in this game. Even the characters I would normally despise, like the purely comedic Impy or the severe protagonist Energy Lupin, were lovable in their own way. Everyone had so much chemistry together, bickering when safe at home while depending on each other out in the battlefield. You get the sense that they have become real friends, and when you learn more about each one, it feels natural. My favorite CG art might just be the picture of all of us together, celebrating another close call victory that leads us all one step closer to our goals. And this level of fun and detail isn't just for our main cast. Supporting characters like Dracula and Alistair, Queen Victoria and Leonhardt, Finnis and Omnibus are all wonderful characters who don't stay one note, but instead seem just as complex. Sometimes they oppose our heroes, sometimes they help them, but they're always a joy to have on screen. Even you! Uh, what was your name again? Tsurunamo. Right. Even Nemo. Which leads me back to our heroine. Galaga is a strong heroine who builds up her strength as the story progresses. She does tend to mope a bit, but I feel it's acceptable considering her background as someone who destroys everything she touches and loves and has been completely alone for two years. She starts very blank, just accepting whatever happens and not thinking too much for herself, but as her friendships continue to build and she experiences more of what life has to offer, she gets her own feelings and can be stubborn or headstrong if she needs to. I think she makes for a decent protagonist. I don't think she's perfect, and she does end up being a damsel in distress for most of the story, but I still feel like she tries her hardest and is dealing with everything as best she can. In the end, what I like most about Galaga is also the biggest hint for how to get the best ends. Galaga just wants to live. Plain and simple. But what about the game itself? Well, this is what I would consider a very traditional Otome game. There are choices throughout the story, but most in the common route just determine who your love interest will be, while the in-route options will lead you down the same path just to one of two or three endings. And there are no bad ending or normal ending CG arts, so the only reason to try to get them is morbid curiosity. There are no branching paths you need to take to find out new info, there are no side characters you need to befriend, just some good old fashioned reactions and words that either win you or lose you your chosen boo's heart. And what ending should you go for? Who is the best boy for your buck? You might think it's Ibi because of his long hair. Maybe it's Van Helsing's Sundare shtick, or Victor's cinnamon roll smile, or maybe even Lupin somehow stole my heart. No. For me, 
The answer is obvious. The best boy is clearly... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, Herlock Sholmes. But don't worry, St. G. You are a close second. That's right. My favorite route isn't even available in the main game. It's a bonus route on the sequel, because this game has not one, but two sequels. Clearly, I'm not the only one who loved these characters. Sherlock Holmes's route is great, his one-sided rivalry with Lupin is hilarious, and Watson is a wholesome pleasure as always, but really, I can definitively say he's my favorite because he's long-haired Sherlock Holmes, and his route plays like a Sherlock Holmes story. And as someone who wanted to date Sherlock all throughout high school, this was just a dream come true. If I were to rank the others, it would be Saint Germain first for the pure amount of tragedy and emotion that pervades his story. He has a scene where he begs for your life, and it is honestly the most heart-wrenching scene I think I've ever seen in an Otome game, and it isn't using cheap shots to hit you where it hurts. It actually stuck with me as a moment where I felt like this character really loved me, to the point where this calm, collected individual would scream and cry for any chance that I may live. And God, am I a sucker for martyrdom. Next would be Victor. He's kind and soft, which usually I don't like, but with Galaga's hatred of herself being a key characteristic of hers, his patience really made the difference. His story is also dramatic and deals with terrorism and the government, so it has enough moments for him to really show off his capabilities and determination, as well as his soft side. It's a very well-rounded route. Next would be Impy or Van Helsing, depending on what you like. I don't think either route is bad, but it is much more dependent on your preference than some of the others. If you enjoy Impy's constant flirtations and general excited idiot attitude, then his route of the prince rescuing the damsel from a crazy scientist will probably be a lot of fun, and have some surprising serious bits. Okay, more like a few. A very few. But they are there. In contrast, Van Helsing's route is more angsty loner monologues and deep revenge plots and betrayals. He keeps running away from others, and you keep chasing him down until he accepts your love. If you enjoy pushing through that beautiful, stubborn skull until he realizes you're there for the long haul, this route will be a blast for you. And finally, Lupin. Now, I don't find Lupin to be too bad of a match for Galaga, nor do I think him annoying or boring. But his route is a mess. It's a combination of the other routes where everyone gets everything resolved, but it's just too much. You jump from Victor subplot to Saint Germain subplot to Impy subplot to Van Helsing subplot, and instead of one threat, you're facing four at once and everyone has to have their time to shine, but that means your connection to Lupin and your romance are kind of on the back burner. Not to mention, it feels like they wanted you to feel that Galaga loved Lupin since she was first kidnapped by him, but because they leave the common route open to interpretation for all the routes, you don't get the feeling that there is this special bond between these characters. But overall, the game is well worth trying out. It does have a larger price tag, and that certainly is nothing to snuff at, but if you have the money and are looking for a fun Otome title to try, I can recommend this one. It has a large amount of content, the completion bonus is some sexy CGs with <gasps> skin, and it has fun with itself while telling a compelling adventure story. It isn't perfect, it kinda makes science this overarching skill rather than a multidisciplinary study, it has a few errors that I saw, and it keeps calling your acid issues poison, which is more of a pet peeve because poison sounds less caustic and more of a chemical reaction that makes your body not work normally, usually induced through ingestion. But if that's my biggest problem with the game, I think that's a win. The two sequels, however, are a different story. Several, actually. Future Blessings has the epilogues to all the good endings, along with three side stories, another adventure the gang had involving the Mafia, a route for Sherlock Holmes, and a route where Gallica tries to save Finnis instead of romancing anyone. I did find these stories to be enjoyable and worth a read, but only Holmes and Finnis's routes had choices. The others are just reading. Wintertide Miracles is much the same. This sequel is entirely based off the extra content in Future Blessings, so you need to have played through that title before most of these stories make sense. But again, all of them are pretty much just reading with no real gameplay. 
They are enjoyable, and there is an extension of the Holmes route, which made my day even better, but if you are only invested in one guy and have no interest in extra content, this would be an expensive buy. For both of these titles, I recommend waiting for a sale and only getting them if you really fall in love with this world and this characters. My name's Gail, and welcome back to Otome Month. We're just getting started, so subscribe to come along for the ride. Bye bye. <laughs>